this week's video is going to be about this enclosure right here. I built it for my niece as a Christmas present. It is going to house a P. Regius at some point. I just don't have it yet. That'll be a different video for the unboxing. But this video right here is going to be in regards to the enclosure, its build, and everything like that. I know it's absolute overkill, but I had to impress a four-year-old, so I wanted to go with a super girly, princessy fairy enclosure. I made most of what you can see inside of the enclosure. I'll of course include little clips that are zoomed in because it is a little bit hard to decipher what's what from far away. Uh, there's a lot going on, but I wanted to make sure it was like a super elaborate fairy enclosure that sort of looks like the fairy has a collecting problem. <laughs> I wanted to be able to do something super fun and elaborate for my niece. Uh, it is for her, but it's going to stay with me and we'll just take care of it when she's with me. I'll give the little spider water, we'll feed it, and she of course gets to name the spider. She's leaning towards Lala. Uh, it's all she, you know, says when I ask her what she wants to name it, and I guess that's kind of what we're going to go with. In this video, I'm specifically going to talk about the designs and what I had to collect, buy, and buy in order to make it. This enclosure is a bit of an experiment. The moss that I did buy from a seller on Etsy did say not to get it wet, which is why I conveniently added a certain moss that I can get wet and then a bunch of little water dishes all over the place for the spider. I also am able to miss the top of the enclosure without getting any of the moss wet. So fingers crossed, no mold or anything bad happens. I have been taking care of it for like a week or two with nothing alive in it right now, just the bare bones. But I've just been testing out spraying the top and then putting water in the little bowls that I've included just to see and make sure that everything works out well and no mold starts sprouting up anywhere. With that, let's get into it. So first of all, I'll just say that this enclosure had a lot of hot glue, a lot of elements that I actually found myself out on a park walk that I did one day. I did freeze the elements that I collected from outdoors for quite a few weeks. I kind of forgot that they were in the freezer for a while and I'm hoping that killed off anything and everything. I did not seal anything before placing it in the enclosure. I'm gonna try and avoid getting anything that is natural preserved wet, just cause I don't want any mold sprouting up, of course. But I did include little dishes all around, which you can see, there's a little one right here, and then there's a little one up here, and then there's a couple more up towards the top. Those, I'm hoping to use this little pipette and just put little droplets of water in it for the spider to drink when she wants. I'll also try to keep them filled up as much as possible. I know they're gonna evaporate pretty quickly just cause they're so small, but I'll keep on top of it. I do go in and look at my spiders an unhealthy amount of times throughout the day. So I'll just keep a little bit of water on hand and top it off when I need to. For the substrate, I used what I used for the rest of my enclosures for my tarantulas, which is just a mix of cocoa fiber, vermiculite, and then sphagnum moss. There is a little layer of pebbles and then some of the moss around the bottom of the enclosure, just to add cuteness. Um, there's also like a little frog pond in the front and then a little bench. And I also made a bunch of these little disc platforms this one is on like a little post that I stuck into the ground, but the ones you can see over here, I actually glued to little magnets so that they're removable. Um, just because I didn't want to glue anything specifically to the enclosure, which is a tarantula cribs enclosure, my first one, which I am super excited about and I absolutely love it. Um, the present being for my niece was a bit of an excuse for me to buy this to test out for myself. And I think that was a pretty good plan. But back to what I was saying. The little ledges. So these, I got the little wood discs from, I believe, Hobby Lobby. And then these little ceramic dishes, which I intend to feed. <laughs> anyway, that's the only thing with ceramics is it doesn't stick too well. The hot glue. But pretend that didn't happen. 
I also glued some of the cute little moss that I got off of an Etsy seller. So far, I'm going to follow the rules and not get it wet. Um, the little dish doesn't actually get any of the moss wet. I just got to be careful not to spill over and not break it like any food. Uh, but yeah, super cute little ledge. I hope they'll jump on it. And there's a bunch of them. There's one without like a little dish on it there and then a couple more throughout the enclosure. So there's a lot of different elements in the enclosure itself. Fairy house is built out of a bunch of stuff I found on a walk in Southwest Florida. So just pine bark and then different twigs and bits and pieces from pine trees as well as seed pods that I could find. I built the main structure with that. A lot of hot glue, kind of just winging it. I started out with like a little three post base and then kind of put a flat uh, piece of bark on top of that and then built off of there. Uh, there's definitely a whole bunch of hot glue and then yeah, a lot of hot glue and hope. Once I got the main structure done on the little fairy house, I got in some moss, the pink moss, purple moss. I knew I wanted to go with a pink purple theme just because it is for my niece and she's the epitome of a girly girl. Uh, I love her to death. Um, but yeah, so I have all the like tiny little mushrooms laying around from different projects, as well as the little purple flowers. Uh, but there's like a little ladder going up and then an open little house. There's a little dish in there. And then in the back there is a little pink fairy bench that I found at, I found that one at Hobby Lobby too. And I had some feathers laying around just because I collect a lot of feathers and I thought that would be a cute addition. There is this cool like hanging jar thing. So this is another magnetic thing. But I got this like, so this round one came on this brown string. And then I bought these separate little colored jars and pretty little ones to add on to them and I just sort of made like a hanging jar decoration for a spider. <laughs> I thought it was cute and it would add movement. I like that I can move everything around. I didn't want to ruin the enclosure by gluing anything directly to it. Um, that wouldn't be cool if I ever wanted to repurpose it. That would suck. <laughs> I guess I could just take this lid off to show. So, my greasy little fingerprints. So as you can see, put it to the magnet, put the jars, can move them around. And then I also, use your brain, as you can see, this is how it kind of lays on it. This is gonna be her little walnut hide. I hope she makes that her little nest area, but if she doesn't, that's totally fine. There's a lot of different areas for her to hide. But then back here is another little two-tier ledge that I made. I did make the little walnut hide. Let me take it off. I made the little walnut hide out of walnut shells from my parrots. Uh, I do give my parrots walnuts. And I made sure I kept a couple of the nice shells that were round. Uh, they did not perfectly close and I wanted to make it kind of large. Uh, so I actually ended up gluing the two pieces together like a Pac-Man and then attaching moss to make it more uh, enclosed. But yeah, I did have to glue, I don't think I can tell. So since the top of the canopy is at a slant and I still wanted the walnut to kind of hang like this, I glued the magnets sort of at an angle so that uh, they can go onto the lid that's a uh, kind of house canopy and still hang. There's also a lot of little crystals around. I got a string of uh, crystals for like jewelry making from Hobby Lobby as well. And I just cut the string and then individually glued them into like nice clusters just to put around the enclosure themselves. Um, I did, I'll post them in, but this is a big old, a 
big stick and then I glued it to a rock at the bottom and put it in the back corner and covered it in moss for like a little hill. A big little bird nest that I got from Hobby Lobby as well. And then I glued a bunch of the crystals inside of it and some moss to make it look really nice. I just thought it would be a nice little area for her to rest. Give her some more space and uh, options and Know, have fun. It is a rather big enclosure in itself for a jumping spider, but I do want it to impress my niece and I figured doing a lot of different cool stuff would give the little spider a lot of different options. There is some hidden sphagnum moss up under the fairy house itself that I can get wet. Like I said, I can't get the pink purple nice pretty moss wet. I assume probably because the dye will come off. Uh, but that being said, I made sure I have specific areas that I can get things wet as well as the lid, which I can easily just take off so that I can spray and not get any of the other matter that I fear might mold, such as the stuff that I found out uh, at a park. I had a couple different things in mind when making the different elements. I'm hoping that she makes her little nest up in the walnut, uh, but I do think she might choose to make it somewhere in the little fairy house or knowing my luck, she's gonna make it somewhere that I didn't intend. I also got these cute little picket fences from uh, Hobby Lobby as well. Also for the cute little miniature stuff, uh, there's definitely a market for miniature garden and fairy house stuff. Michael's has some stuff on hand as does Hobby Lobby, but there are definitely specific places that cater to the miniature uh, community. <laughs> My grandparents have a little miniature uh, country store. It has miniature cats, rats, cans, pots, pans. It's really cute. <laughs> little seed packets. The little frog pond that's in it is pretty shallow. I'm actually hoping that I might be able to include a little bit of water in that too as a water source. Uh, just because, like I said, it is pretty shallow. I don't think she'll get stuck or anything in it. Um, it's probably as shallow as the little bowls, honestly. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned for next week's video. It is going to be about my trip to Disney. Uh, as you guys are watching this, I am probably heading to the Fort Wilderness right now and the Disney parks. Uh, we live about two and a half hours away. Um, thinking I'll get there around 3 p.m. But we'll see how all things go. Uh, we are staying at the campground in our camper and I'm definitely gonna make a YouTube video about it, so that'll probably be next week's. Uh, it'll be like a vlog style, mainly focusing on the campgrounds because that has a lot of Florida nature, and then definitely Animal Kingdom because my entire page is about animals, and also a little bit of Epcot because they do have the aquarium. I don't think I'll show much of Magic Kingdom at all, if anything, maybe some ducks, um, but, if you guys want to see more of that, let me know. Let me know specifically what you'd like to see if you have anything in mind. I'll be there Friday and then we'll come home Monday, but we'll be hitting every park except Hollywood Studios. I decorate the golf cart while I'm there, so I'll probably include a little bit of that. Our camper, our campsite, and then there are curly tail lizards there. They are invasive, but I'll include them because they are super cute and just anything else they have. They have the horse barn, which is absolutely amazing. They have the most delicious vegan food ever. Um, I'm super excited. I have a Disney annual pass. Uh, if you ever want to like bond over Disney, Disney and Tarantulas. If you guys want to stay up to date with everything and kind of see things in real time, my Instagram is also Paws, Tails, Spins, and Scales. But anywho, thank you guys for watching this week's video. Please like and subscribe if you want. And then follow me on Instagram if you'd like. Bye-bye. Uh,